Are you looking for an awesome place to store your media, your videos, and your images, and do transformations and optimizations? Well, look no further than Cloudinary. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to build an image upload to Cloudinary using React and Node. So let's go ahead and dive on in. So as we get started here, I'm on the cloudinary.com, the homepage here for Cloudinary. And just want to, again, give a real brief intro into what Cloudinary is and, and why you're probably interested in it. As web developers, we have sites with media, images, and video, and how quickly those things come in to our website in terms of being loaded is really, really important. So a service like Cloudinary is going to not only just kind of host your, uh, your media, your videos, and your Im images, it'll do the asset management part, it would do image manipulation and optimization as well. So you can do transformations to different sizes, scale it up and down. Uh, you can do optimization of just like kind of compressing your file sizes, all that really cool stuff. And this is really key for a performant website where you want these things to load really, really quickly. So you wanna pull in the most appropriate file size. For example, you don't wanna pull in a really big image for a mobile site. You wanna pull in a scaled down version of that. So Cloudinary is going to be able to do all of that stuff. It's super, super cool. And I'm really excited to create this video about it today. So what we're going to do is we're going to create this image upload uh, demo here. So we can uh, choose an image and let's just grab this Airtable logo. We can upload this or it'll show the preview here. Then we'll click submit and it'll show us that it got uploaded successfully. And then as a little bonus, we'll go in and show uh, the, uh, the gallery here just to show that image is being pulled in. And shout out to uh, two of my friends here for <laughs> inadvertently being involved. Will Johnson from our Learning Quick episode a couple of weeks ago, and then Chris uh, from Chris on or Chris on Code from Digital Ocean, who is just kind of on here because I had a screenshot of him for testing. So anyway, thanks for being in the video, even though you didn't have any choice. So I'm gonna stop the demo of this running, and let's scroll over and look at what we have. So. Um, inside of our code, we've got two different folders, a front end and a back end, and you'll have access to this in the link below uh, for the GitHub repo, so don't worry about that. And I'm gonna go ahead and run the front end. So all we've got are two different pages that are stubbed out, the gallery and the upload page. So here's the home or the gallery, and then the upload page, and we're gonna add all the functionality that we need for those. And then also, in our server function, uh, our server folder, we don't actually have anything yet. So that's what we will do in a second. So let's go ahead and get this into the server directory and we'll create that server file here in a minute and get ready to take care of all this stuff. So let's close out the stuff we don't need. Let's go into the upload component and let's go ahead and start to stub this out. So what we're gonna need is a form and uh, no action here. And inside of this form, we're going to need an input and this will be a type file. So actually image uploads just in regular HTML forms is a little bit new to me, um, but that's what we're gonna work with. So we'll have a name of image and then we'll want to have an on change value that we'll set in a second and then a value. So we wanna actually bind this to some piece of data in React and then let's use a class name of form input. Now, a lot of these uh, classes that we'll use are gonna come from the base CSS. So this is included in here. Uh, I'm not gonna cover the CSS. It's just some basic styling to make this thing not look terrible. So we've got uh, those things there, and then we want to have a submit button as well. So let's do a button and class name of BTN, and then a type of button, and let's just say uh, submit this image. So uh, let's stub out, let's say on change uh, will be handle input or handle file input change. So this is gonna be a function that we'll define up here. So const handle file input change equals uh, this arrow function here. And we're gonna need to keep state, uh, keep a couple of things here in the state. So we're gonna need the actual uh, file input um, itself so we'll have const and then file input state and set file input state equals use state now we're obviously using a hook or maybe not obviously we're using hooks inside of react so what this is basically saying is uh, when i call this use state function that i need to import 
up here. Um, when I call this in state or use state function, it's going to return back an array that has two things in it, the actual value that I can reference inside of my functional component and then the function I can call to update that thing. All right. So there's that. And then let's also have another one for selected file and then set selected file. And we can call use state, uh, with this one too. All right, so that looks good for now. And then inside of our file change, so when the user actually changes something, uh, we want to grab the file out of that input. So the way this works is you get uh, the file from e.target.files. So if you were doing a multi-upload, you could go through uh, each one of the files in this. We're just grabbing one file. All right, so that looks good. So let's save that. And is this running? Looks like, oh, we've got our value uh, is missing, and we want this to be our file input state. All right, and, and I've got some weird IntelliSense happen here where it populated the, the node modules folder. That's not actually what we want. We just wanna import that from React. Sorry about that. So let's go uh, back to the site and uh, we see we've got our form here and I don't think we're logging anything yet, uh, but if we choose an image, uh, we can Maybe let's come into a picture of me so I'm not using pictures of other people. Here's a picture of me at a wedding. And we're not actually logging anything yet, uh, but what we should be doing is keeping track of uh, that selected file. So we want to actually handle that and we want to do a preview of this image so that the user can see what uh, what's going on. So let's call a function called preview file and we'll pass in that file. And let's call preview file and it takes in a file and this is just going to show the user here's the thing that uh, that you selected so we're going to create a reader which is a file reader or a variable called reader which is a file reader and these are just built in javascript apis and we'll say reader.read as data url and basically what this is going to do is uh, convert that image to a url and we'll pass or sorry just a string basically and uh, we'll pass in the file and then we pass or we tell the on load in property to be this function where we will set the preview source and i think that's another piece of state we need to have up here so let's do const and set preview source preview source all right so we'll get uh that one there let's set the preview source to the reader dot result. All right. So then what we want to do is actually display that thing. So if it's set, we want to actually display it. So let's come down here below the form. And let's say if there is a preview source, and we do that with this little and trick, then we're going to uh, do an image tag. And the source is going to be the preview source. Now remember that source is just basically a string uh, that represents the entire image. So um, it's got everything it needs in there. And then I'm going to put a little bit of style just right in here uh, to say this is going to be 300 pixels high to make sure it's not too big. All right, so there's our preview. Anything we're missing? And one more bracket there. All right, so let's see now. All right, so let's see now if we upload an image or choose an image. So here's me circle. All right, now we get our preview, so that's cool. Now we wanna actually, actually handle the submit. So let's come back and on our form, let's say on submit, let's do handle submit file and let's create that function. So const handle submit file equals and we'll take in E for the event. And then uh, as always, or usually in React, uh, with, um, with your submit functions, you're gonna call e.prevent default um, like immediately almost every time, all right? So uh, let's check if there is no selected file. So if the user hasn't selected a file, just return. We won't necessarily throw an error or anything like that. And then we want to uh, get a reader again. So we'll get a reader, new file reader. And uh, do the same kind of thing, reader.read as data URL and pass in the selected file. And actually, I think we've already got all this stuff done, so it's inside of the preview source. So we should be able 
to use that preview source uh, since we have the selected file and uh, with the selected file we should have set the preview source so hopefully that thing is already set by this point so now with that preview source we can call uh, just another function that actually uploads the image so call upload image and we're going to call this with uh, with the preview source so let's say preview source let's take that preview source and let's call upload and uh, then we'll create our upload image function and uh, i think this was just kind of a snippet uh, that i grabbed online but we'll grab uh, or just call this the base 64 encoded image and this is basically just going to be a string so let's just log out this base 64 image for now all right so let's uh let's come back over let's uh, try to click submit it shouldn't do anything because there's no selected file let's now select uh the me circle image and now there's a file and we click submit hopefully we get something showing up here in the console and it doesn't seem to be so let's go back and take a look at uh what we're missing here handle submit file let's just see if we're actually hitting that function so if we click submit uh looks like that's not firing so maybe we're doing something wrong there so handle submit file is going to be the on submit property for the form which looks right also missing a class name on here to give a little bit more styling and handle submit file oh and actually i think it's because our button shouldn't be a type of button it should be a type of submit which will actually trigger this submit so it says submitting here we haven't chosen a file now if we come back up and choose a file hopefully we'll see this big uh, long string down here maybe not so let's go and double check that now and let's see we're inside of uh, the submitting here if there is no selected file which is something we didn't do earlier so we want to set the selected file and actually I don't think we need we don't need the selected file anymore what we want to check actually uh, i think i was just keeping too many properties there we can just check if there's no preview source so we're not going to necessarily keep track of the file that was chosen itself we're just going to keep track of the raw string that represents that file so now let's do the same thing let's test this out with a me circle and a submit and now we see this is our long string so this is the string representation which is really really big of that image it's a url or base 64 url encoded uh, string of that image which is cool all right, so that's all we want now uh, well i guess we can kind of stub out a little bit more so on the actual upload of the file what we want to do is submit this to the server so let's just stub this out uh, we're going to use the fetch api and we'll have a try catch i gotta try to remember to use the snippets which are pretty sweet here so there's and i want to update this to include the logging out of the air but anyway so there's a try catch and uh we'll, we will uh, just call await fetch and uh, we're going to call the slash api slash upload and then we'll pass this a configuration object and we'll say this is going to be a post and the body is going to be a json stringified version of the data which in this case is uh, or an object that includes the property of data which is the base 64 encoded image all right so there's that and then uh, we can specify i can't remember if i actually needed this or not but the content type uh, inside of the headers to be application slash json all right that looks good except this should be a capital c all right and saying you can't use a wait inside of a non async function so here's our async function all right so this thing now will will try to upload this file and obviously it will fail because there's no uh, server that's running so that should fail 404 cool so that all works so let's go dive into our server aspect of this and uh, let's come into our empty server file and i think we've already have i done an npm init on the server i think i already have uh but it, no maybe i didn't okay so here we go all right so that thing is knitted and we need to in, install express we'll also want the cloudinary sdk so you can find this on npm as well 
All right, so we'll go ahead and install Express and Cloudinary. Now, one of the things we need to do on our front end is we're going to need to be able to talk to our back end while they are running on different ports. So we're going to want to proxy our front end to our back end. So we're going to have our back end locally running at 3000 and one so we're going to add another property in this package.json for proxying our request from localhost 3000 which is our react application to 3001 which is where our server will run so i'll have that proxy configuration let's uh restart this the front end just to make sure that that proxy is taken into account all right we don't need to go and check on it all right, so that looks good on the server we've installed those packages and now we want to add a server.js so we'll, let's open this up and this is going to be the only file or only actual like source code file that we have on the server so uh, we're going to start with creating a basic express app so we're going to require express and if you're new to node uh, we're basically just kind of setting up the scaffolding here of our app so we'll call uh, the express function and then uh, you'll call app.listen and you're going to listen on a port, so 3001, for example. And then you can have a callback function to log out um, listening on port 3001. Now, usually uh, in production, you'll do something like this. You'll say port port equals process.env.port. So this is if that uh, port is set on an environment variable, you'll use that. If not, you use 3001. And then uh, we'll say down here uh, to use that port. And then we can say inside of here as well, we can reference that port in, inside of a template literal string. So this is going to listen on either the environment variable port or 3001. And what I'm gonna use is NodeMon uh, instead of just Node. So NodeMon will uh, automatically reload the server if I change something inside of the server JS. So it's actually really, really nice for development. And you see that my server is running on 3001, uh, which is really nice. So uh, let's do, let's go ahead and just kind of stub out an app, app.post. And the route here will be slash API slash upload. And all of your callback functions take in a request and a response. And uh, we're gonna surround this stuff with a try catch as well. So let's go ahead and log out this error in case anything goes wrong. And the reason we're doing uh, this try catch is we're gonna actually try to upload something via Cloudinary. So the first thing we wanna do, we wanna get the file string from the rec.body.data. So remember inside of our front end, inside of the upload component here, uh, we're sending along an object that has a property of data and that value is the actual string representation of the image. So let's just uh, log out this file string. Let's make sure we can get it all the way there and read it. And one of the problems that we're going to have is you can't really use, um, you can't really use, uh, what am I trying to say? You can't really parse body data without doing a bit of configuration. So one, let's move this port down to the app. Listen. All right, and then I'm gonna paste in a couple of boilerplate lines here uh, using express.url encoded um, will allow you to uh, accept data from forms. We don't actually need that here. And then you also do express.json calling this will allow us to parse JSON body data. And then we set the limit to a higher limit of 50 megabytes so that we can upload bigger images. So that's all we're doing there. All right, so let's go back over to, well, one, let's save this file, which should reload our server. And uh, let's refresh this upload page. I don't know if we have to actually. And let us select an image and click Submit. And we should see that we didn't get a 404. So hopefully it's submitted and we're actually able to see the string on the server. So that's super cool. We've got our React and our Node uh, set up. That's working really well. So uh, the next thing we wanna do is actually upload this thing to Cloudinary and uh, this becomes, let's see, do I have any Cloudinary configuration in here? Actually pretty simple. So let's take a look at Cloudinary, Cloudinary on NPM. All right, so with the Cloudinary uh, library here, we need to initialize uh, the Cloudinary uh, just uh, package. And so I haven't imported this yet. The reason is I'm gonna create a new folder inside of 
here called utils. And I've been doing this a lot recently just to kind of like spread out some of my code and then be able to reuse it. So I can create a Cloudinary file in here and I'm just gonna copy and paste over a little bit of a snippet. And all we're doing here is basically just creating or configuring a Cloudinary object. And the couple things that you need are your cloud name. Now the cloud name is, uh, let's go ahead and log into Cloudinary for me. The cloud name is not anything that's private and neither is the API key necessarily. So you can see my cloud name is here, my API key is here, and the API secret is actually something that I don't want to let you see, so I won't let you see that. So uh, what uh, we're gonna do is use those things, those credentials, and we're gonna do them with uh, environment variables locally. So what we're gonna need to do is install .env package, and this will allow us to work with environment variables locally. So I'm going to create in my server a dot env file and we're going to have the three properties the cloudinary api key the api secret and the cloudinary name all right so this is what it will look like you will need to fill in with your information here so make sure that you uh, paste in your actual values and with that in place now inside of my server i'm going to uh, grab that cloudinary object so get cloudinary equals require and then go into the utils directory and Cloudinary. So all we're doing here is grabbing a reference to an already configured Cloudinary object. Now, again, the reason for this is if we needed to use this Cloudinary object in another function somewhere, we could do that by just doing the same import or require statement. So now let's go ahead and use this thing where we want to say uh, const uploaded response equals await and then Cloudinary dot uploader dot upload and we pass it the file string and then you can choose a upload preset and this is just a configuration here and there's dev setup so inside of cloudinary you can have different upload presets and you can get to those in your settings tab here and then your upload tab and if you scroll down, you can see uh, I've got dev setups in here. So what this should do is dump these uh, pictures into a folder called dev setups. Now this dev setups is actually for like a different kind of test thing, but just to show off how to use your, um, your upload presets, uh, that's what it is. So there's, I've already got an upload preset there. You can specify different things, but in this case, I can specify where to save those images. And then inside of my upload call, I pass in this configura configuration object and tell it I wanna use the upload preset of dev setups. So uh, let's uh, log out the upload response. All right. And then let's call a res.json. So we'll respond back with a message that says, yay, uploaded that image. If we fail, then we'll do something basic. We'll return back a 500 and then uh, return back a JSON object that has an error of something went wrong. So obviously not being super specific here, but it is what it is. So let's call our nodemon again. Let's start back up our server and immediately we get an error. And you can only use a wait uh, right here inside of an async function. Again, I always hit this problem. So make sure you mark that uh, callback function as async. All right, so now let's go uh, back to our front end app here. And I don't, we shouldn't even need to reload the front end. We should just be able to click submit. And if I haven't already, I probably want to uh, not log out the string, but uh, that should have submitted. If we look in our network tab, we see that we got back at 200. So it seems like something happened that went well. If we come back to here, we see uh, the object that comes back from Cloudinary after we upload the image is here. And it has several different things that we might care about. An asset ID, a public ID. So this is like, if you wanted to display this thing, where would you find it? Uh, width and height and a format and uh, all these different things, which is really, really cool. So what this should mean is if we go and check inside of Cloudinary, inside of this uh, page for dev setups, we should see we have our new image is uploaded into Cloudinary, which is crazy, super cool, I think. So we've got this whole process of a React form to be able to 
uh, upload an image to Cloudinary. Now, the other thing I want to do, and this is kind of a bonus here, and this is already a longer video, but I think it will be uh, cool, is let's do a get request to slash API slash images, and then let's have an async function with request and response. So similar to what we had before. And what I want to do is get a list of the public IDs that are inside of that folder from Cloudinary. So uh, let's grab uh, from this uh, call that the search call that we're going to make, we're going to abstract or extract the resources property out of that object. And we'll call uh, wait cloudinary.search. And there's lots of different uh, ways to customize your search. So we will call the expression here. And we're going to pass this a string to say folder and dev setup. So this is saying we want to get all the ones that are inside of dev setups. Then we want to sort by, and we want to sort by the public ID descending. We'll set the max, and you don't have to have all of these. This is just kind of setting you up here. Max results is 30. And then you call the execute function there. All right. So uh, then we'll get the public IDs from resources. So from that resource, we'll need to map and get uh, an individual file. And for each one of these, we want to return the file.public ID. So if you remember in here, uh, when we logged out the object that we had created, there's a public ID property. So we want to get uh, an array of all of the ones that come back from the search. And then we will uh, res.send or res.json either way, res.send our public ID. So this is just going to send back an array of all of the IDs so that we could display them on the front end, which I think is cool. So let's test this out. Let's go directly to localhost 3001 and let's call API slash images and let's see what we get back. Hopefully something. Sweet, so here are all of the uh, public IDs of the images that are inside of the dev setups folder. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And there should be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight images in here. So that looks like it's working. All right, so with that in place, let's go uh, back over to React and let's just set up a way to display these. So let's grab our home component and there's nothing here. So let's start with uh, doing a use state to get the image IDs. So that we're going to make that API request uh, to our backend to get them. So we'll call use state. I'm going to get an auto import in here. And then we'll have a load images function, which will be async. And again, we're going to uh, do a try catch. And as always, log out this error if it happens so we can see it. And then we're going to do another fetch. So we want to get the response back from the fetch. So we'll call uh, await and then fetch and then API slash images. And notice I didn't specify this earlier, but I'm using uh, relative paths here. So I'm not specifying localhost 3001 slash API slash images. We're using a um, not an absolute path, but just a relative path to that API because we're doing that proxy configuration in React. And then from that response, we want to get back the data. So we do await uh, res.json. And then let's set the image IDs to this data. All right, if there's an error, we'll catch it. And we want to uh, call this load function when our component is ready and basically only one time. So we'll say use effect. And this is a way to determine when you want this callback to be run by passing a dependency array. So this function, here, this callback function will be run anytime something in this array changes, which in this case it's empty. So uh, it will only be called once and we'll call load images. All right, so let's just see, let's uh, log out our data here. Let's just see if it's actually getting it. So let's go back to our homepage and uh, use effect is not imported. This needs to come up here. All right, uh, and then let's go to the gallery or the home page. I think I kind of messed that up. And you see, I get back my response. So now all we need to do is uh, take in those public IDs and then display them. So uh, let's come back over to React on the front end. Let's install Cloudinary React. That's the package that we're going to use. And then we're going to import the image property from 
Cloudinary React. And image here is basically a component. So I'm uh, gonna do a little bit of styling on here. Home is going to have a class name of title. And then um, I may not actually end up styling this thing. I'll probably skip it for now. We'll just have all the images there. But uh, we're gonna say if image IDs is set, so a little and trick here, then we'll call image image IDs dot map. And so we'll get a reference to each uh, image, image ID, and we wanna surround this and uh, grab the index of that item as well. And with that, uh, what do we wanna return? Well, we wanna return that image uh, component. So this should be the capital image component from Cloud and Airy, and then we'll just set all the properties that we need. So anytime you do a map in React, you have to do a key, and we'll just use the index here as the key. And then the cloud name, I'm just going to hard code this to uh, my cloud name, which is James Q Quick. And uh, we'll set the public ID to the image ID. So that's, that's the value that's in that array. And then uh, we'll just set the width to 300 and the crop to scale. So these two specifically are properties that uh, Cloudinary will take and handle and then translate those into a transformation when it makes its request to get that image. We'll see that in a second. So let's do, uh, let's start this back up and let's see what we got if we run the right command. All right, so we see all of our images are coming in here. Uh, not super well organized. I'm not gonna waste too much time on styling that, but I do wanna show for each one of these images, if we look at the request URL, how can I, what's the easiest way for me to copy this? I think I can do this. If I copy this into my browser, notice that, and if I zoom, I don't think it'll zoom in on the bar. So let's do maybe this. If you look at this URL over here, you'll see there's properties in here for scale and for width. So C under source or for crop and for width. So C underscore scale means crop equals scale and then width equals 300. So Cloudinary is actually able to do those transformations real time based on what we put in this thing. So if we say a width of uh, 100, now we should get back a smaller image. And if we uh, did some sort of different crop or some sort of different height, I wonder actually if I did a height of 500, probably get some sort of wonky image, right? That's not what we want, but we can do that. So just by manipulating the URL that we're requesting, uh, we can transform that image. And Cloudinary will do like caching of your transformations and all that kind of stuff. It's so super cool uh, that uh, one, it's able to do that. But then in the React SDK, the library here, all we need to do is just specify properties for this component and it's able to display uh, really, really nicely. So again, just want to kind of recap. Uh, we went through a lot here. This is a longer video than I usually do, but I thought it was a lot of fun. We worked in React and Node to create a full upload system. So from React, we're able to uh, grab an image or let the user select an image, preview that image, and then submit it to our uh, backend in Node, and then in Node actually upload that uh, image to Cloudinary and choose a, a predefined uh, or a preset for the upload so that it can go to this dev setups directory. And then we created the endpoint to be able to query inside of this directory, all the public IDs for the images and then display them inside of our app. And again, we got some styling that we should do going forward, but I think that's super, super cool. Cloudinary is incredibly powerful. So question of the day, are you, what are you using for your media management? Are you using a service like Cloudinary? Are you doing any optimizations or transformations on your images? If you're not, you should definitely take a look at Cloudinary. If you're using something else or have some other sort of system that you use, let me know in the comments below. In the meantime, I had a blast working on this video. You'll probably see more Cloudinary and image and media related content as uh, I kind of step into my role as a media developer expert. So keep an eye out for that. And again, thanks for checking out the video and I'll see you in the next one.